Welcome to Your Vote, the St. Joseph News Press's coverage of the municipal election. We are continuing our Q&A series with the municipal judge candidates and with us is Terry Loudon. Terry, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. We're, we'll jump right in with the questions. Um, obviously, you have a ton of experience in practicing law here in town. How does your experience practicing law translate to the position of municipal judge? I think probably the best way to explain that is that I have had the opportunity to be in courts from Kansas City to Rockport. So I've been in many, many municipal courts. I haven't been limited to just here in St. Joseph, Missouri. I've been in very small courts and very large courts. So I've had the opportunity to see what works and what doesn't work so well. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so I can translate that into what is beneficial for us here in St. Joseph. What do you see as your role in limiting crime as, as municipal judge? Well, I think that's very important. Obviously, every case that comes before me, I will take as a, its own on its own merits and treat everyone fairly. But it would be disingenuous to say that judges have no part in the um, remedying of crime or not. So I think one of the most important things is that you're fair, but that you also understand the need for consequences for um, illegal conduct, that you consider the full range of punishment. And right now, if I'm going to focus in on what we're dealing with now in St. Joseph and the municipal court now, you really need to view municipal court um, kind of like the neighborhood. And what happens in your neighborhood gets translated into the city as a whole. Mm. Municipal court is the smallest court. It's the lowest level court. Um, it's not a court of record, but it is on the ground level. It is where everything starts. And so it is important that municipal court um, correctly identifies issues and tries to remedy them. Remedy them. Now, obviously, um, some of that is punishment, but some of it is really trying to help people um, correct their errors uh, through probation system. Unfortunately, our probation system, as it's currently run in municipal court, is broken. Um, we have no consequences. They're put on probation. There's nobody overseeing it. They get another, um, not a minor traffic ticket, but you know, another stealing charge or property damage charge or some of these things that's really, really hurting our communities. And there's no, there's no ramifications for that. And that's a broken system. And I plan on reviewing all the policies and revamping the probation system in municipal court. How do you try to enhance the relationship between you know, the courts and, and, and law enforcement? I think the, number one, we need to stop treating our law enforcement officers as collection agencies. I mean, it's just untenable that we're taking a police officer off the street for hours to process somebody because they didn't pay $25 fine. That's not the way we should do this. They're not collection officers. Uh, we need those officers on the streets dealing with, you know, theft and assaults and those things, important things that are going on. So, um, I think one of the things that you, you do is maybe do more like what they do in state court where if somebody comes in on a traffic violation and they get a fine, they have so long to pay it, <clears throat> but if it's not paid, it just gets turned over to a collection agency and it gets sent to Jeff City to, and may affect their, their driver's license. Um, actually, it's a driving privilege, but it, it, it affects that. But you're not taking a police officer away from a you know domestic violence call or something else 
to go arrest somebody who's in Savannah or Gower and then transport them back here for a $25 fine. Uh, that's why we have so many warrants out there. It's, it, that's another process that I really want to review. The other thing is, I, you know, I don't think that there's a lack of respect for police officers in St. Joseph. I don't believe that. Um, I believe that all the judges do consider police officers. It's a balancing act a lot of times, and I understand that. Um, however, I would want everybody to have a seat at the table. So when I go through and look at the probation system or look at the collection system, I don't want to fix something and break something else without hearing about it. So I certainly, in the administration of, the, of what I would be doing, uh, not you don't have personal contact about individual cases, that, that would be improper and, not, and I wouldn't ever do that. But just in the administration, I would want to hear from police officers, defense attorneys, you know, everybody that's in the, the clerks, everybody that is a part of the system should have a seat at the table to make issues known. I'm not saying that um, it's going to be a democracy, but I certainly want to, to know about problems and, and I will certainly listen. How would you limit repeat offenders in the court? Well, there's no way to completely eliminate repeat offenders some people are going to be repeat offenders. Most people that are in municipal court are good, hard-working citizens of St. Joe that happen to be driving a little too fast or, you know, made an error, made a mistake. And those people, you know, are not going to be a problem. They're, they're going to take accountability for their actions and move on and everything's going to be fine. There are some people who choose not to do that, and it's a way of life for them. Um, so as a judge, the only thing I can do is to take their prior actions into consideration when imposing a sentence, and I intend that I would do that. Um, do you think, you, you, you touched on this a little bit already, but do you think there are enough consequences in municipal court right now? No. How would you change that? Um, as I kind of already said, one is I really want to review and revise the whole probation system. Um, I've been an attorney practicing in municipal court for over 31 years, and I have never had a client have their probation revoked. And I have great clients, but it's not that none of them um, failed to successfully complete their probation, it's just they never revoke a probation. And that, you know, that is just untenable. So that's one um, thing that I really want to do. I also would really like to have, as far as repeat offenders, um, I want to, I want everybody who is placed on probation to be successful. Okay, I'm not out to try to see hey, let's see if we can revoke people. That's not the point. I want them to be successful. I want to give them the tools to help them be successful. And I want them to have um, the, um, a program where somebody is checking on them for accountability to help them be successful. It's kind of tough. It's, you know, if somebody says this is a rule, but you know there's no consequences for breaking the rule, then it's more like it's a suggestion and not a rule. And all of us, it's human's nature, I think at least, I mean I, I, I know it is with me, that if a rule's not ever enforced and nobody else is really following the rule, it's a little tough for you to follow that rule. But if it is enforced and you know there will be consequences if you don't follow the rule, you tend to be able to follow the rule a little easier. And that's the same with people on probation. So it's not just about punishment, it's about trying to make them more successful. And I, I want them to be successful and I want to uh, look into bringing some programs to municipal court probation system that would uh, help them become more successful, thereby helping our communities in our city. Would you implement alternative forms of sentencing at all outside of, you know, fines or community community well, think, service 
I think that we already do. Um, probation is an alternative sentencing, uh, and I'm certainly open to ideas about that. And programs, as I were kind of hit on earlier, that I would like to bring uh, to bear for municipal court. All of those are alternative sentences, and and I think that oftentimes an alternative sentence is um, better than just here pay a fine and see you later or in or jail. Fines can be a burden for low-income residents, of course. Um, do you see it as your job to ensure that you know these fines don't become kind of don't lead to recurrent poverty? Absolutely. There were some new laws that were passed in the state of Missouri um, following the Ferguson uprising. And it brought to light that there are some municipal courts that are used as revenue raising uh, entities for the city. Municipal court, if, if I'm elected judge, will be ran as a court of law and not as a revenue raising facility. I don't think the municipal court here has ever been run that way, but I have appeared in and I have seen uh, courts be used in that way and that will not be allowed you know if I have anything to say about any of it. I also want to say that I've always felt that a structured fine um, schedule is inappropriate. Every case should be considered and all elements of that case, including the defendants and the defendants' ability to pay, should be considered when imposing a sentence, whether it's jail or whether it's fine. And so if I find, you know, if the judge would find uh, someone of great means, uh, $200, that's lunch money. And here you go, and not a big deterrence. If a person who's just really working hard, may, maybe working two or three part-time jobs and has, you know, little kids, that might be their mortgage money. That might be the food money. The, and so it is not the same to find that person $200 as it is somebody who it would be of little consequence to. So those are all things that I think should a judge should be mindful of. As a judge, how would you address kind of the homeless problem in town? I don't think a judge can address a homeless problem. Uh, unfortunately, we do see um, a lot of homeless people end up in the courts and especially in the lower courts like municipal court because they'll get charged with trespass or, you know, some littering and, you know, some of those that would come along with being homeless. Um, Homelessness has to be addressed by society as a whole. And for me to say as a judge I'm going to somehow fix the homeless problem would be disingenuous and not true. So, um, you know, that's something that maybe the city council or some, you know, some beings bigger than me would need to take care of, but I would certainly be mindful of it. I know they used to have a homeless court system. Um, you know, I'd be willing to revisit and look at that. Uh, if that means then you just have, and as was my understanding of it, I, I would be honest with you, I never appeared in one of those dockets because homeless usually don't hire private attorneys. Um, but I think what it really was was before COVID hit that they would have social workers and, you know, people showing them here's how you can put yourself in a better position. Here's the programs available to you. And I'm certainly in favor of doing something like that. I mean, uh, but that does not mean that because you're homeless, you should not be held accountable for your actions. You still, you, everyone, whether you're a judge, a police officer, or a citizen, everyone uh, has to be held accountable for their actions in order for our system to work as it should. Do you believe, you know, can St. Joseph's appearance, the blight, the structures, the vacant properties, do you believe that can be addressed through municipal court? You know, um, going back to the new laws that went into effect, in fact, they limit the amount of fines that you can find someone for those types of offenses. Um, also, 
uh, don't allow um, for strict enforcement. Once you do, uh, in fact, issue a fine if that's what the judge would do. So, but what I can do, or what I think the judge could do, is limit how long these cases are drawn out. Um, for instance, if it is you need to cut your grass and you haven't, six weeks before you even go in for an arraignment is way too long. And so what the court can do that I think would be of help would be to expedite those kind of cases, whether it's trash or, you know, mowing the lawn or unsafe building, um, you know, and then, you know, these continuances that go on for months and months and, you know, and in a couple of cases, years, um, can't be done because that is not enforcement. That's, you know, not justice, not for the defendant nor for the city. I'm um, just kind of end here. What's one thing you would change in the current municipal court process? Well, <clears throat> I want to say the clerks in municipal court are just amazing. They have a really, really good staff. So I'm very thankful for that. And if I were elected, that would be very helpful to me to know and that they are so good. Um, so depending on what you mean about administration or exactly what you're asking, but obviously from all my prior comments, um, the things that I think would be big is I want to stop using police officers as collection agencies. I want to reform, totally reform, uh, the probation program in municipal court. And I want to make sure that I'm hearing from everyone with regard to any new programs enacted. Um, so I want everybody to have a seat at the table. And I, and, and I want some real programs to assist our probationers so that they are successful. So those are the real things I'm looking at. Once I, if I'm elected, once I uh, get in, I may find other things that need to be changed. But right now, um, from my experience and from what I have personally seen in municipal court, those are the major things that I'm going to be look at, looking at immediately. That's kind of all I had. Is there anything else you wanted to add or say? I think that it's very important for people uh, to understand that it, the experience of being in other places and other courts is of great value. Um, and the relationship, even though I have been a defense attorney for over 30 years, the relationship that I already have with both the public and with the police officers is of great, great value to me and would be to them. I've been endorsed by um, the Fraternal Order of Police here in St. Joseph and considering that I've been on the other side for 30 years, I think that says something.